Hey, how's it going, geeks? Welcome back to the channel. We got ourselves a little update to the SRB miner. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to run SRB 1-3-1. And these guys are really active right now, so they're cranking out new versions almost daily. That's why I haven't really posted a video in the last couple of days, last few days. The miner is a little different, and I'll show you guys where. If we double click it, you're going to notice there's now a pools text file. We didn't have this before in the other miner, in the other version. Version 1-3-1 has just a single configuration file. The first thing I'm going to go through are some of the SRB commands. These are really important. So these are all the SRB commands given by the developer. And all of these are going to be used inside of our batch file right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit. And we're going to open it. Now inside this folder, you're going to notice some of these uh, commands are already listed. For example, we need both of these no matter what. The config and the pools. So you guys can see down here they're already placed. So these two commands are pointing to these two files right here. If we really wanted to, we could rename them. Let's say uh, you could rename this Monero as an example, but you would have to rename this as well. And you're telling it to open this text file up here. Same with the pools, you can name this whatever you want as well. The next command after that is a log file command. It just basically keeps logs of what the miner is doing and if it crashes and whatnot. I don't ever really use it, but if you really want to, you could just copy it and paste it anywhere over here. And just hit file save and it's going to log whatever your miner is doing. And this is the one I was asked the most, the list devices. Um, your text document isn't going to have this automatically placed. It's going to look a little like this. You're going to have your config and your pools. All you have to do is copy this and paste it. We're going to hit file, save. You should probably do this before you do anything. Um, especially if you have multiple graphics cards of uh, different types of graphics cards. So we're just going to hit start and it's going to display all of our devices. So you guys can see right here is showing my Intel CPU and whatnot, my Vega card. So if you have multiple devices and you want to know which device ID each card is, go ahead and paste that command it's going to tell you everything um, that way you know uh, which card is what in our configuration file down here and the last two commands we have are these two right here disable ADL which I'm not really a hundred percent sure what it does and disable GPU watchdog basically does what it says in here it disables GPU crash detection. If you want that, go ahead and copy it and paste it in the batch file. I don't use any of this. I only use these two. You can use this to list your devices, but once you're done, you're going to want to take it out of your batch file. Otherwise, it's not going to run the miner. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out right now. So we're going to remove this out of here. And we're going to hit File, Save. Alright, so we got all the commands out of the way. Let's close out of this. And let's get to the actual miner itself. Alright, so this miner is very similar to the old version. So we're going to go ahead and click on our configuration file. In this particular case, I'm going to be mining Stellite. So I'm going to use Normal V7 since it uses the same algorithm Monero does 
I'm gonna be using a Vega Frontier, so my intensity is gonna be 120. I'm gonna be using two threads, so I'm gonna click, I'm gonna type true in here. It basically walks you through everything, just like the other one. I don't want the program to adjust the temperature, so I'm just gonna leave this at zero. I wanna do it manually myself. And this is the only thing that's different in this uh, config. The developer added a reboot windows batch file. So basically if you want your computer to restart after a graphics card fails, leave this here. If you don't want it to restart after your card crashes, you're going to want to take this out. I always take it out. And lastly, this GPU configuration section down here. This section down here is where most of you guys were having issues with. If you want to use this GPU configuration section down here, you're going to want to take these uh, common line si symbols out of here. So we're going to take both of these off. And we're going to take both of the bottom ones off also. So in this particular case, I have a single Vega Frontier. So I'm just going to use one single ID. Remember, if you have multiple cards, go ahead and run this command line right here. That way you'll know which card is what device ID. And you can adjust your values here according to whichever card uh, that particular ID applies to. In this particular case, I only have one. So I'm going to go ahead and take these bottom three out of here. Just going to keep one single one. Now here's the thing. If you're going to be using this GPU config section down here, this will overwrite whatever you have up here. So this line down here has priority. If you set this to one thread and let's say a hundred, just as an example, this is going to override these values up here. So if you set this to true, so you want two threads and you set this to 120, but you leave this down here, it's going to apply this over this. So just keep that in mind. The GPU section overrides whatever this section up here says. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 120. I want two threads per card. And I'm going to hit file save. And we are finished with our config. Alright, and the last thing we're going to need to modify is our pool text document. So we're going to go ahead and double click it. And inside here, you're going to notice we have multiple different uh, pools. I'm going to go ahead and divide these so it's a little easier to see. So we have pool 1 and pool 2. You can have a backup pool in case your first pool dies on you. It, has, it gets DDoS or whatever. Um, so you can go ahead and place your primary pool up here in the first line and if the miner disconnects out of this pool after a set amount of time it will swap over to the secondary pool that way you don't really have any downtime so I'm gonna go ahead and replace these uh, uh, lines with my own info in this particular case I'm gonna be mining in this pool I'm going to be using this port. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it on here. And I'm just going to paste my address in the wallet section. So I'm just going to replace it. And the particular pool I'm using uh, distinguishes between workers under the password section. So I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, test vega. And the location, I'm not really sure where this section is here, honestly. I've never seen this before, but I just leave it in Europe. doesn't really affect anything. But it is a little odd. This little section wasn't there before. I'm not really 100% sure, to be honest. 
And in this particular case, I'm going to just remove this because I don't want it to mine Monero at all. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit File, Save, and we are pretty much done with everything. We can go ahead and double check our config. So ID 1, Intensity 120, Work Size 8, 2 threads. Awesome. And these two values are going to get overridden, so that's fine. We're using normal V7, which is what Stellite uses, so that's good. We put our information in the pool text document, so that's good. And, oh, I forgot to change this back. Config. Because we're pointing to this config text up here. Pointing to the pools document down here. And we are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. So you can see intensity 120, work size 8, 2 threads, and we are up and running.